Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, at what age do kids, pretty high-ranking juniors that are on the younger side, when do they quit tennis and why? Stay tuned. All right, guys, good morning to everyone out there. And good morning to my coffee sponsor of the day, Dean Bogdanovic. Thank you for the coffee. Dean writes, thank you for the fun content. Oh, Dean, thank you for the piping hot coffee that I got from Pete's. I appreciate you. Um, if you want to be my coffee sponsor of the day, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. Thank you guys for keeping me going. I appreciate um, everything you guys do for my coffee habit and keeping me going all day. All right. Mm. All right. So. You know, I, I see a lot of juniors, you know, I've been in the game for like 35 years, been a junior myself, and I've seen a lot of kids that are kind of young and they, they get a lot of success at age 9, 10, 11, even 12. Um, they kind of, they dominate and, you know, they win. They're like, you know, really, really good up till age 12. You know, they're literally like everybody's looking at them like, oh, yeah, he's going to be a top ranked junior. Um, he'll do great in the 14s, 16s and 18s. Right. And then a year later, suddenly they're gone. What happened? Why did they leave the game? And what age did they do that? Because they were an aspiring great junior player. Right. So I'm going to call in Coach Rob here and we're going to discuss that um, right now. All right. So Coach Rob has been coaching kids for how long, Coach? 30 plus. OK, 30 plus years. Now. You see a lot of attrition through the ranks of tennis. Um, what age do kids usually kind of fall out? quit the game like like i'm uh, done with this you know or take a break is another okay. way of you know i would say a lot of times you get lower school middle school kids um up to sixth grade they're fun they're enjoying it they're playing with buddies and then seventh grade seems to be where maybe it's not as cool and now basketball is really cool or baseball is cool or whatever your friend group is doing um is kind of where they start to migrate to. And then their after school activities, all the other sports are trying to get them to play more. So they have less flexibility in their schedule to pick up um, another activity outside of their main sport sometimes. So, you know, that's kind of it. Sometimes you can keep those kids into high school and then they're into it and they're playing through high school and then they kind of fade out maybe in college um, or maybe it's somebody who played a lot when they were younger, they faded out earlier, but then they come back to it in college and they have a friend who, uh, Hey, you want to go play or a fraternity? Hey, we're having a fraternity tennis match or, you know, cause they have fraternity basketball games and those kind of things. So you never know kind of where the path will take you as long as you can, if you have positive moments of, of tennis that you've enjoyed over the years that hopefully you'll come back to it and your cycle will take you through, um, you know, after you get out of college, it's sometimes I know that's where, you know, you've got less income, you're trying to find a job, you're hopefully, you know, maybe back living at home, trying to move out and you're, you're limited in your um, disposable income and disposable time. Like how much time can you squeeze in? Um, right. So to do that at a young, young age, I, I feel like even great juniors who did well at you know, age nine, age 10, you know, they are playing up to their 12s, kind of at that 12 to 13. Sorry. Fuck. Sorry, we'll do that again. 
We'll do that again. Now it's like doing this. So I'll 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 start from where I was. So so Coach Rob, I feel like um, even the good juniors who did well at age nine, ten, eleven, and they were playing the twelve year old tournaments and doing very very well. Um, I feel like when they hit that twelve. 13 year old um, range that that's kind of the cutoff where you either stay in and move on to high school and play tournaments there or or you kind of abruptly stop you know that that 12 13 year old so what is that equal to is that a that's about a seventh grader eighth grader ninth grader so that's Somewhere exactly in that realm yeah. And a lot of it is maybe you don't, you know, you've been playing local tournaments and doing well, and now all of a sudden you're going to have to travel more. And you're like, oh, man, now I'm going to, you know, uh, I'm spending my entire weekend, every weekend, um, traveling and playing tournaments. And some, you know, families want to make the decision, sure, let's go for it. And some are like, you know, this is becoming a, a greater travel cost. It's a, um, a, a bigger time suck it, it, so to speak in that you want to hey i want to experience other things i want to do other things i have friends i want to hang out with i want to um you know focus more on studies or whatever right um or or they don't have they don't see this as a long term like hey i'm not gonna get a college scholarship out of this i'm not you know sure i'm good enough i'm gonna play in high school but it's not taking me you know i'm not going on tour <laughs> so no i i totally it, so at that 13 year old range i think you can see the path if the ones that love tennis obviously keep trying um the others that don't kind of see it as a burden you know it is a burden to their life uh they like you said they rather do something else you know what what else at age 13 is gonna get in the way right i remember when i was 13 you know i uh, the look my, the, the way I looked at life kind of changed. Um, I mean, I cared about what I wore. You know, I actually styled my hair when I had hair, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it's like, you, it's a transformation. It, it's puberty, yeah. right? You yep. discover girls, right? Is girls more important than tennis? Or is tennis more important than girls and hanging out with friends? Right. I feel the, the, the thing that I see the most of is the ones that are kind of in purgatory with it is they hang with it for maybe a year at the most. And they see they kind of go like this on success. I'll enter a couple of tournaments. I'm kind of halfway in and one foot out the door. If I'm successful, I, I proceed. Right. And it's just success that makes you proceed. If you get like killed. Right. We out the door. Right. And, and if you, you know, are playing with friends or you know other kids that are playing tournaments and you become, that becomes your friend group. Right. Um, and, and, or it could be, you know, this is not it. I have other, have, you know, other opportunities of things I want to explore and chat and try and do. And, um, you know, that's a great point. Actually, if your friends are doing it, you're probably going to do it too. And then you build up a nice little community um, of families that travel out to tournaments and those people kind of become lifelong tennis friends. And I, I've seen that year after year, you know, decade after decade where, you know, people meet up after, you know, after they're done with college and have careers and they still meet up for tennis. Right. Just because they did it when they were that young. Right. So it's, you want to build that. Like if you're at a club, you want to build that community where there's other, you know, you have multiple kids you can hit with and you travel with and, and you're playing with and competing with and practicing with. And so it is a social thing as well as, um, you know, not just the, I got to get my ranking up, but it's still, you're still enjoying playing with your friends and right. yes, you are still trying to have success, but, um, it is a, uh, uh, a, a social thing as well as the, and it could be for whatever sport, but for especially for tennis. Right. But I mean, the day to day grind, the day to day competition, I feel like that, like, like you hit it on the head, middle school, that seventh, eighth grader, 
you know, that's usually um, where it ends, you know, for most kids. So, and, and it's hard to play multiple sports. I mean, not a lot of, you know, if you go to a big competitive high school, it's hard to play more than one sport. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to be so good to just to make that team. And then you've got to be so good that you get to play. Right. It's one thing to make the team. And then can you get cracked with lineup, right. whatever it is, you know, whatever sport it is. Well, let's not forget like commitments too. Mm -hmm. you know, like you got homework, obviously exams, finals, um, whatever chores your parents put upon you. Uh, it, it, it all kind of, you know, comes together and all that pressure becomes, you know, too great for kids sometimes. Right. So. But then you can also get kids that were doing other sports and kind of rode the course and then go, hey, I want to play tennis. My friends are playing tennis. And I want to come back into it or mm -hmm. join. And they didn't play a lot before, but they've seen that it was fun and their friends enjoyed it. And so sometimes they'll get into it because they've, you know, sort of burned out or... That's a different group, though. Yes. I've seen that. That's a different group. If you start them young, they usually end at 13. If you start them at, let's say, 11 or 12, you know, 10, right? Coaches, you know, usually in the elite side say that's a little late to start your kid. But when you do that, they stick with it longer. So that's a, that's a different topic. But right. um, if you are in young, you're out young if you're in older you're probably going to stick with it longer all right because your f core group of friends are from there on now is instead of ending at age 13 let's say now i uh, want to thank my man coach rob for showing us the way in terms of uh you know knowing kids and knowing you know what their limits are and when they usually you know quit the game all right Thank you, Coach Rob. Sure. Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Hey, man. He, you can tell he been some, through some emotional damage. No, man. <laughs> you look like you went through hell and back. You need some AP tennis. That's what you need. Babe, I, I have some emotional damage. Uh.